Hello, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host of Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of Life. Thanks so much for stopping by. I wanted to begin with an excerpt from a book called Crushing by T.D. Jakes, and it's talking about um, the subject of quality control. When everything falls apart in our lives, we are broken but not destroyed. The exterior husk we all rely on for so long begins to fail us as the waters of life soften our protective coating. The tender inner life and identity of who we are is naked and helpless in front of those things that threaten the only existence we know. When we are placed in perilous circumstances, we rush to secure ourselves and hold everything in place. We shoot roots into the soil beneath us in hope of anchoring ourselves against life's storms. We yearn for someone or something to hold on to, to lift us, to sustain us, but too often we droop and wilt in the winds of our isolation and loneliness. How do you respond to being broken by life? Where do you try to put down roots to secure your life source? Do you focus on acquiring money only to find that it doesn't fulfill you? Do you reach for sex only to discover that the touch of another person is just a reflection of your own loneliness? Perhaps you reach for church only to realize that religion without God's voice is nothing more than sprinting inside a hamster wheel. Whatever it is that we do while trying to maintain balance and security, Sooner or later, we typically feel stuck. Our roots stay in place as we strain for the thing we believe will make it all better. Because everyone reaches for something when it seems God is silent. After each failure of ineffective actions, we hope to anesthetize our pain. We stretch ourselves to touch something, anything, that would make our loneliness and discomfort more bearable. In our rush to escape the pain, messiness, and brokenness of our lives, however, we often miss our opportunities for growth. Mired in the muck of our misguided mindsets, we miss what God may be doing in the midst of this dirty, awful place. With a heave, strain, shove, stretch, and a charge upward, you fight to leave the place you were planted because you surely, surely you believe that God has to have something better for you than what you've come from and where you are. Your core cries for you to get out of that abusive home. Your heart yearns for escape from poverty. Your gifts expand and surge as you seek to grow your business. Surely, you say, in the midst of God's apparent silence, he will not abandon me in this place of death. Right when you've lost all hope, you see something you have never witnessed before. When you resolve within yourself that maybe, just maybe, where you are is your assigned lot in life, God remains vocally silent, but reminds you of his promise by showing you the light you have never seen. You move toward the light, slowly stepping out in faith, despite all the pain, filth, shame, and suffering. Breaking through the dark soil of where you were placed in life, you sprout and rise to continue seeing another world of possibilities. That dirty place that you are becomes the nurturing soil that enables you to grow and blossom in ways you would never have experienced sitting in the safety of a greenhouse. In Montessori circles, there is something called indirect preparation. When we give lessons in a classroom, either as a teacher in a traditional classroom setting, or maybe at home as a a homeschooler, or even as uh, being a mother and teaching your children new things, you know that you're teaching your child one thing, but there's multiple layers in the lessons they are learning throughout the day. 
Here's Dr. Maria Montessori's take on what direct preparation means to her. She spoke on it during these lectures in 1946 in London. She says, what exactly do, do we mean by indirect preparation? I spoke of it on another occasion when I said that it is the way of nature and of growth to prepare both the organ of the intelligence and the intelligence itself for the next step. It is done by indirect means. In every action, there is a motive of interest. Through it, the organs are prepared for something in the future. It is the con conscious interest of the, mo of the moment that prepares the, intelligent, the intelligence and the organ for future development, though the individual is unaware of this. Suppose a child of one and a half years old is interested in carrying a bowl of water from one room to another. It is the immediate interest carrying th through something very difficult that enables him to acquire the coordination of the muscles needed for this movement. The same coordination will be used for other movements that the intelligence may demand of him at a later age. The conscious interest of wanting to carry the bowl prepares the organs for what the intelligence will later demand of him. This indirect preparation takes advantage of the interest at this early age. It prepares the coordination, which would prove to be a tedious task if they had to be prepared consciously later in life for the fulfillment of an interest proper to the greater development. Holding the knob of the cylinders with the first two fingers and a thumb is a preparation of the coordination for the hand of writing. At a later age, the intelligence of the child will urge him to write, but he will be impeded if the organs are not prepared. The lack of preparation will be an obstruction to the intelligence. It will repulse him and kill his interest for intellectual expression as well. Nature prepares the intelligence and the organs which will perform its movements in the subconscious. When I Am Among the Trees by Mary Oliver When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the birch, the oaks, and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness I would also say that they save me, and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself, in which I have goodness and discernment, and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me the trees stir in the leaves, and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches, and they call again, it's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. <laughs>